Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Detroit Unity Temple for the opportunities and challenges of living meet the awesome power of God. Because we know that this is the day that the Lord has made. So let's start by giving God a hand yeah. for this morning. I love it. <laughs> the first Sunday in September. Oh, my mind seemed like he got around here real fast, didn't it? <laughs> first day, absolutely. I know this is a wonderful time here for life. So we want to say thank you for joining us via the internet, and we welcome you to our spiritual community. You know, God is so good. All the time. All the time. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to take a moment and breathe in the idea of how blessed we are. Yeah. Did you wake up this morning feeling blessed? Raise your hand. I woke up feeling doubly blessed. Because sometimes you have to just know and realize that God is always there. We're going to begin today's service with the reading of today's daily word. So let's welcome the Reverend David Stubbs. We say good morning, Detroit Unity. Today's word is togetherness. Our affirmation says, togetherness enriches my soul. So much of modern life involves time alone and solitary effort. The more conveniences I acquire, the less time I may seem to have when I find myself spending too much time alone. It's good for me to invest time and effort in my relationships. Togetherness is a way to remember life is about more than work and busyness. And I am a part of something greater than myself. Time spent with others blesses and enriches me. It calls me to share of myself and remain open to others' journey and ways of looking at life. I may have, have not considered. Togetherness is a balm for my soul, a way to feel the presence of God reflecting in those whom I share this wonderful planet. I am part of the wondrous human family, and I celebrate our togetherness. The scripture comes from the book of Romans, the 12th chapter and the 5th verse, and it reads, So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually, we are members of one another. Amen. Amen. As we move to this universal segment of our service, we do so with asking you to join in and participate with us through the power of the spoken word, through the usage of your voices. So would you do this as we affirm our congregational mission statement. Together, our mission and goal is to prayerfully demonstrate the teachings of Jesus Christ through the study and practice of truth principles. Now, let us affirm our vision statement for the Living Temple. Together, we, the spiritual community of Detroit Unity, joyously carry out the vision of renewal and prosperity for ourselves, our spiritual home, and our world. We add to that that says what we want for ourselves, we want for all God's people everywhere an unselfish statement of truth. For this week's food for thought, it comes as this. As metaphysicians, we are charged to use this ability to think, to reason, and choose wisely to establish an orderly growth for ourselves as God's highest creations. Let me give you that again. As metaphysicians, and that's all of us here, yeah. that's all of us, 
So it's saying for all of us here, we are charged to use this ability to think, reason, and choose wisely to establish an orderly growth for ourselves as God's highest creation. Amen. Amen. If this is your first time joining us at Detroit Unity, we welcome you. We encourage you to join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. in an in-person service. We also encourage you to be sure to sign the guest book located in the lobby. And if you are unable to come to service in person, watch us at any time at www.youtube.com forward slash Detroit Unity. And at this time, we're going to call our DD, dynamic duo, that you might come and grant and give us a hymn. Amen. Something that we can all sing together. Yeah. It's so true. Precious. When you point your finger, point it at yourself. Such a powerful song. Yes. As, as we say to you every Sunday morning, pay attention to the lyrics of the songs that we sing. And as we just got through with our uh, week's food for thought, it says, as metaphysicians. So you will find that the lyrics of the songs are dedicated to helping you become a more thoughtful, productive individual. Amen. Amen. Now, let us affirm our statement of truth. And you know, we don't just put this in here to fill up a piece of paper or to keep the screen full. This is something for you to pay attention of the words that you are affirming and as they can become an active part 
of your being. Let's affirm this together. There is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe. God, the good, omnipotent. You know, sometimes you look around and you kind of think, what? What? <laughs> you say what? He said what? They said what? But listen, go back to the, or the origin. Go back to the original. There is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe. God, the good, omnipotent. All right? Let us affirm for this week's prosperity thought. Together, unity is strength. When there is teamwork and collaboration, wonderful things can be achieved. Think about it. Where there is unity, there is togetherness. And when we find that we come together in this room, being one of mind and spirit, we find there's a certain camaraderie. There's a certain fellowship that helps us when you see somebody you haven't seen in a while, or you'd be glad to shake hands with somebody that perhaps has been on vacation. But it's always a warmness and a camaraderie that we find when we come here. Now what we're going to do is also give you an opportunity to reflect on God in you. And this segment of our service is designed to help you settle yourself on the God in you. So we encourage you to become comfortable where you sit to follow the instructions of the meditator. And we do this as we prepare for our morning meditation by reflecting on the goodness of God and singing our Lord's Prayer. I invite everyone here and those in our virtual world to close your eyes and just become still and take that deep breath as we step into the presence of God. Take another breath and exhale 
and one more time, take another breath and release. As we quiet ourselves, we can feel every cell, every muscle, every nerve being relaxed and we quiet our thoughts. Let us go to the center of our being and feel your heart breathing and know that this is God, the God within. This is the month of order and we know our God is a God of order, yes. not confusion. And if we are heirs to God and co-heirs to the Christ, we too must be of order. So if there's anything weighing on our hearts this morning and we need clarity or answers today, let us go into the silence remembering divine order is always at work in my life and the world around me. Divine order is always at work in my life and in the world around me. Just breathe that in. Divine order is always at work in my life and in the world around me. How sweet it is to feel God's love and to know his peace. We are breathing the breath of God and knowing that God is a God of order. We will receive the answers. Knowing that we receive according to our faith and knowing that all things must be done properly and in an orderly manner as we accomplish our goals. So take another breath. And when you're ready, come back to this place and time. And so it is. Amen.
song written just for Detroit Unity and the wonderful lessons that we learn and remember and use on a daily basis. And Charles Scale. Let's give him another hand. Yeah. Raise my mic just a little, please. Marquise, take me up a little. There you go. Let's give him another hand, please. The one. Yeah. How do you feel today? Great. Come on, now you can do better than that. How do you feel today? Great. Yes. That's right. You know, this is a very special time we live in. Yeah. So I just want you to know that right now as we go forward, this is very special. These next few months, <laughs> Talk about it. these next few weeks as we move towards November, is going to be so 
important yeah. that we begin to realize how much we have to step up into our Godship. But I'm not, I'm going to slow down because I haven't got started with my talk yet. But I feel good. So let me get centered right now. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy path, and lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. I have to share with you that the title of my talk is called The Power of Why. All right. Have you ever had to deal with the word why? Yeah, yeah. All right. It says the spiritual order that begins with asking the question. I remember my daughters used to come up and want to ask me why. <laughs> I said, you better be careful when you ask that question because you may not be what you like. <laughs> It might be a no until I can think about what you've asked and, and asked me to in your request. Every month, for those who are new to unity, we reflect on the spiritual power for the month. Every disciple is given a certain month that we can reflect on and give pay homage to. The spiritual power for this month is represented by the disciple. Hey. I have a cheat sheet right behind me. You can look up there. <sighs> The coordinating color is olive green. And the physical location is in the naval area. The affirmation said with me, my life is in balance and in order and all is well. Yes. You know, I just want to give honor to God who's ahead of my life as I began to step into this moment of thought. But I want to share with you that idea of that affirmation. My life is in balance and in order and all is well. I don't know if we can truly say that today with what's going on in this world. Yeah. I don't know if we can reflect on that and say all is well when the world is not in balance. This is going to be a part of my talk because the idea that we have to look at is the fact that as metaphysicians, now for those of you who are not aware of a metaphysician or metaphysics, the metaphysical meaning of the word order is a divine idea of order is the idea of adjustment and as this is established in man's thoughts, his minds and affairs will be at one with the universal harmony. Somewhere along the line we gotten away with as metaphysicians, we know that order is very important. Every group, every aspect of the universal life, from an ant all the way up, there's an order that exists. Yes. And we have to be aware of that. Reverend James Trapp wanted me to say that, but once again, reflecting on the title of my lesson, I have to tell you, when I began to work on this letter, I had to ask a courageous question of why am I here? Yeah. And who am I? Have you ever thought about that, yes. why I'm here? I want to tell you that many of us may think we know the answer, but let a storm come along the way, and you may wonder whether or not you truly know the answer. It's a courageous question. And this is where I was going to go. The Reverend James Trapp said, to move forward, to move towards a consciousness that fosters the collective good, we must be ready to embrace the perennial wisdom teachings of unity, oneness, and interconnectedness. That is what brings me back to the question why. If you look at our world today, you would wonder what, why are we living the way we live in? Just yesterday at the State Fair, two young people were shot. We wonder if whether or not we have actually lost our minds. Some of us, not you here, of course. But we know that I hear over and over people talking about, I don't want to go there. 
because it might be too dangerous. I don't want to go to this particular place because it may get out of order. You look at our high schools. I think I would have a challenge trying to grow up in our high school so that the young people, I know y'all have some thoughts around that, don't you? Because in our high schools and in our school system and our political fronts, that concern is the fact that we seem not to have any order taking place. And we have to wonder, why am I here? In Hebrew, the word why is lama. Is the exact translation of why is used to ask the reason for something. Lama. How many of you can right now fully say why you are here? Raise your hand if you're still struggling with that idea. How many times have it changed for you over the years? It may have changed a great deal. We seem not to be embedded into the idea that we have to answer that question, why am I here? Some of us go through life never knowing it. How many times have we asked God why? The biggest challenge is that that direction of that thought is always outside of us, but where should it be directed to? Within us. If that connection is not there, and you keep going to other people, searching around like you're searching for the Holy Grail, not knowing that that answer and that, to that question is right inside of you. We are in a very difficult period right now because we have to address the questions. Our youth are asking us for that direction. If the adults or the adult in the room cannot address the question, why am I here? The most difficult part is trying to work with that understanding. I know for a fact that when I began to study the definition, it says everything happens for a reason can have multiple spiritual meanings. When you ask the question why, you look at cause and effect. I don't know how many times I tried to find, when I was coming up, hoping somebody would guide me along the way, or how many different traps or travels or things I was searching for to find out why. If you remember, <laughs> for some of us, in the 60s we were searching for it. In the 70s we tried to find it. The 80s we thought we had it. And the 90s it got lost. I'm not jokingly saying that. But now we look at, as we came into the year 2000, I mean, remember 1999 and they were so concerned about what was going to happen to the world. They were so concerned that some people went and got aluminum foil and put it all over them so they won't be impacted by the radiation. <laughs> Y'all forgot that. <laughs> you see, there's no greater question that we must begin to address than why. That why is something we don't want to go with because if we have not been living our life properly, we may be lost in the confusion. In the book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter, there was some thoughts because God was disappointed with where the world was going. He saw confusion. He saw people not living the way they should be living. So he wanted to ask the question. As he heard his people cry, he asked, I've heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I, here I am, send me. For those who may not be a biblical scholar, it was so much going on at that particular time, but God was looking for somebody who he was willing to send or be willing to go and share God's message. How many of us are ready to go to the east side of Detroit and speak to some of our youth? How many of us are ready to go inside the school system and let them know that here I am, send me? 
How many of us right now understand that we have to get involved in order to make a difference in this world today? Because nothing's going to change until you're willing to be the change itself. If you're willing to step forward, if you're willing to say, Lord, here I am, send me. A lot of times those words are quietly spoken inside of you. But you have to have the heart and the courage to be able to deal and address the issues that we're facing because if you haven't addressed the issues within yourself, you will not be a help out there. The river and the tides are too strong for you to try to go in there. If you're not strong within yourself, you understand what I'm trying to say. It's no joke out there in the streets. It's no joke when you try to work with people who are hungry. It's no joke when you want to try to stand up. But in order to stand up, you have to first ask yourself the question, why am I here? Because your answer is going to direct them to know how sincere and strongly you are. It takes a lot to have that kind of courage. That's why I give our Vice President credit, because she has the courage to say, here I am, Lord, send me. She has the courage to be able to stand there and take all those darts that will come towards her, all the doubt, all those lies that are being directed towards her. She's one person, but we can be many who are willing to do that. That's the part that confuses me. We expect one person yeah. to be the change agent. My question to you is, are you ready yeah. to be a change agent, to be a part of that effort to go forward? <laughs> it's no wonder why Obama grew great very early and <laughs> quick. He took on all that weight. You know, there was a line by Michelle Obama that I have embedded into my heart. She simply said, do something. Do something. When you ask yourself the question, why am I here? It has to be followed with do something then if you know why you're here. Do something to be a change. God gave all of us, and I'm going to repeat this, I say it all the time, an assignment. And in your assignment that was given to you at birth, you have to ask the question. Because it will be asked of you, what do you deserve more than anything else? You have to say light. You have to say truth. You have a desire to be lifted up, to be raised to a higher level of vibrational thought. We got to quit playing low, down. Don't lower yourself to the level of trash. Raise yourself and know that there's a God inside of you that's calling you forward. So when you say, here I am, Lord, send me, you're saying that not only for yourself, but you're saying it for your children. You know, one of the songs I loved over the years was by the Winans. Remember that song, The Question Is? There are some lines in there that says, I was at home late one night. The Lord asked me, would I do his will? And I told him, yes, yes, yes. Then he said, I'm presenting my body a living sacrifice. All I'm going to do is the will of Christ. I was asked this question, and the answer is yes. Do you know that every day God is calling us, asking us, are we going to do his will? You know, we step in line, we join groups, we want to be a part of organizations, we want to be a part of churches, communities, school groups, PTAs. But the question is, are you willing to do his will? When you tune in to yourself, you're tuning in to God within you. That's the only way you hear God. You have to be quiet and still and committed. You have to have a commitment level, a sacrifice. 
says that the universe is always speaking to us, sending us little messages, causing coincidence and serendipity is reminding us to stop, to look around, to believe in something else, something more. I thought about the idea of, of what it must have took Harriet Tubman to hear God's will, to be able to go down there through the South with no road map, no GPS other than what was inside of her. Yeah. To, to travel through the darkness, through the forest, the jungles, and to be able to call out those in order to be free. Not just to do it one time, yeah. but to do it over a hundred times. You know, we had to think about what it took Dr. King when he thought all hope was lost. And I never forgot that line where he said he knelt down in the middle of the street and started to pray. You don't think he asked God why? Yeah. You don't feel that God inspired him to just to get up and walk. There are characters from Mahatma Gandhi to others who are willing to take on that yoke to say, here I am, Lord, use me to recognize that the universe is always speaking to us. We have to know it right now. In these next few months, November will be here before you know it. The question will be asked, are you ready to do my will? Some of us have to know truth, have to understand it. You know I can't say what to do, but I want you to know if you do something and you allow the God within you to guide you and lead you along the way, you will do the right thing. <laughs> you know, we are at that point. We have to grow up spiritually. Yes. We have been spiritually immature for a long time. Others have done the work, but now we have to grow up spiritually to do the work. We can't look back in the past and think of, and live on those echoes and those vibrational frequencies and shout and get all excited because there's a day when you're gonna be called, this time period right now, into the present moment. And in the very present moment, don't look around and tell me what others are not doing. Don't worry about what might have happened or what could happen. You will make the reality by what you do today for tomorrow. When you say, here I am, or you address the question, why? You know that your purpose is tied to that why. Some of us feel like we're a boat without an anchor or a rudder. A boat without a rudder will just continuously go in a circle. And we have to know that right now, in this very moment, we may be the one that will make a difference. We have to know right now that when we become spiritually aware, through synchronicity, for example, it's a sign that despite the uncertainty, we are aligned with the forces of life. You have to be in alignment with God. When you say, why am I here? You will know because your, your consciousness will merge and marry with your heart. It will be together in that space of oneness as you walk with the freedom and the courage and the knowledge of knowing that I am here. God use me. Don't worry what others may say. You have to have the courage to say it yourself. If you see wrong, correct it. Do right. You see, we have all the power within us to correct the world we're living. Some of us got to step up even higher than before. Support and lift our youth up, to support our seniors, to be a wonderful avenue of love and trust. Because there's no going back. Amen. Amen. There's no going back. 
Did you hear those words being echoed right now? We're not going back. Everything is in our hands, in our minds. We have to know it. We have to want to be it. You see, because what you do, someone else is watching you. Someone else is pointing to you. But all you do is focus on God through your prayers and your meditations and know that right now it's all about this experience of love and grace. See, when you know it, your feet will be firmly planted on the ground. You walk with a consciousness, have this mind in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Can you imagine when Jesus was asked, why do you do this? He said, the Father and I are one, and we do it for our community, our people, our children, so they may live a life filled with abundance and know the truth of who they are. If you are to be kept in darkness, then you won't know who you are. You have to seek the light. You have to seek the truth within yourself. And you have to know that it is your responsibility to study, to learn, to grow, to help. I love how Dr. King said, if I can help someone along the way, my life will be worth living. Yes. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So brothers and sisters, I just want you to know that that powerful question of why is in front of us. And we must step together in that space of time. Because we'll look back, and I don't want to hear about if we could have, what we should have. That's always something you can say as an excuse. What matters most is what did we do in this hour and this time at hand. So I want to just leave you with that thought that your assignment has been given to you. You know the why is embedded in your heart. It is your purpose and your reason for being. So I encourage you to step up to the plate because if you're watchful, there are those around us who are doing it. And all they know they need is our courage for us to be what God has called us to be. God bless you. Right now, it is that time period where we prepare to bless and be blessed through our tithes and offerings. So let us affirm our prosperity prayer together. Divine love in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And as the ushers come forward, we'll be blessed with another song by our very own Gwen and Charles Scales. And please know right now that your tithes and your donations can be made through Givelify app, PayPal by mail, or simply extending it or coming down. But whichever way you extend that, we simply say thank you for it. Right now, let us welcome Gwen and Charles Scales. Another song that was written by Detroiters, yeah. ourselves, and a very talented gentleman by the name of Stuart Skaggs. And uh, so when you look in the mirror, everything that Reverend Geist just said, see that power inside of you, because that's where it is. Let's see. Come on. Give him some more love. And when, while you were talking about Rev, you were talking about going, I, I, going with the flow, Kimi. You know, a river flows forward, right? Does a river flow backwards? If it starts flowing backwards, what happens? It starts rising up. If something gets in the way, it just gets a little dark. So, there we go. This is for each of you. When you look in the mirror, don't look at nobody but yourself.
Let us take this moment to pray. 
Oh, gracious God, we say thank you right now for the blessings we have received. We say thank you for each and every person who's just a part of this one spiritual moment. And we say thank you for truly we bless it knowing that God's abundance flows forth freely to each and every person. For this, let us all say, thank you, God, and so it is, amen. All right, I'd like to invite up Mr. John Cromer, who will bring us the announcements. Yeah. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you today? Good morning. Yeah, I'd like to share my why with you. Um, I think that uh, part of our job um, on a daily basis is to do some of God's work. Uh, and I think my way of doing some of God's work is to simply and distinctly be kind to the people that I come in contact with. Uh, that costs nothing oftentimes. I mean, just to let a person in line or to say hello to them. Saying hello oftentimes goes a long way. So it's a beautiful thing, but that is my why. So I appreciate that word, Ralph. We have, uh, begin, we have some special guests today. Uh, I'd like to, like to acknowledge the brothers from the Unity Lodge number 28. Is there somebody who wants to? Yeah. You guys want to stand up, please? Does anybody want to say anything? Yeah. Stefan, you want to come up and say something? Would you like to say a word? Good afternoon. Did you go to Michigan? I did. We went to Michigan together. So do we. <laughs> Good afternoon. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I am glad, and we are glad that we've had a chance to spend today with you. And we want to send our love from Unity Lodge number 28, Most Worshipful Prince Hall, Grand Lodge of Michigan, and our love to you, our own beloved chaplain, Reverend Guys. Thank you for having us today. Thank you, Thank you. Michigan all the way. Amen. Uh, today, I'd like to join the prayer chaplains in the Fred Robinson room at the end of the service for prayer. Let's join the Monday night prayer circle focusing on the Christian healing of Charles Fillmore. That's on Monday between at 6 o'clock p.m. That's via Zoom. Reverend Geis, our own Reverend Geis, is teaching a class, a class coming up, the Infinite Way class that has just begun this past Tuesday. Join the class on Tuesdays at 6 o'clock p.m. via Zoom. And the next What is Unity class will begin Wednesday, September 4th for four weeks. What is Unity is the actual class that we need to in order to be uh, a member of the church. It's a good class and it's very, it's actually, that's, it's a good class first. It's a class to join the church, but it's also a good class to kind of refresh too for folks who are members already and want to kind of refresh your, your services. Uh, call it for the candidates of the Board of Trustees. I'm a candidate for the Board of Trustees actually. Um, the Detroit Unity Temple Candidate Nominating Committee is seeking individuals to fill three positions on the Board of Trustees in November of 2024. If you are a member and willing to heed the call to service, please see one of the committee members for further information. These positions require a commitment of your time, talents, and your resources to uplift the temple. Mark your calendars. We are celebrating 108 years of DUT. 108 years. That's a long time. We had a celebration the other day, folks. We celebrated a friend that had an 80th birthday just Friday. That was a wonderful time, too. Uh, but there's a gala going to take place. It will include a fashion show, dinner, dancing, and silent auction. The gala will take place from 6 o'clock p.m. to 10 o'clock p.m. at the Dearborn Double Tree Hotel. Tickets are $108, and they'll soon be available at the Temple or, or Eventbrite. If you would like to donate an item to include in the cited office, uh, auction, please see Carol Weaver. Youth ministry will be honoring grandparents on Grandparents Day, September 8th, during fellowship, with lunch served by our youth and a small gift that is a token of appreciation. There's also going to be a free workshop on Medicare 101 brought to us by Andrea, Andrea excuse me, Hicks on Sunday, September 8th after service at 12 o'clock. Margaret Wood Auditorium across the hall. It's regarding Medicare, parts A and B. Unity World Day of Prayer of 2024 will be September 12th. 
Am I correct, right? Yes. Okay, great. September 12th, this, is the, this day of prayer brings people from around the world together to unite in consciousness and to affirm the power of prayer for peace, healing, and spiritual connection. This year's theme is Moving Mountains. Unity believes that when people come together with a shared intention, the power of prayer is amplified, creating a, a ripple effect and, the, and, the re, and, and it reaches beyond the individual lives and influences of the world. Of the world. Okay, the holidays are almost upon us and we are looking for donations and volunteers for Thanksgiving baskets. That's in November. To help families in need with, with a happy holiday as well. We are accepting donations at the church beginning now, today, through November 19th. We're also looking for volunteers to help package and distribute baskets, packets, excuse me, baskets, baskets, right, to the community on Monday, November 20th and Tuesday, November 21st. Birthdays and anniversaries. Thank you. Uh, let's have Letitia McCree Thomas come out. She has an announcement as well about um, members. Good morning, Detroit Unity Temple. Oh, I'm so I'm so excited today. So, visitors, Reverend Geis is going to acknowledge you shortly. But if anyone in here is a member or a regular attendee, please stand. Member or regular attendee? I want you to turn around and look at yourselves. Isn't this amazing? You may be seated. Let me tell you why I did that. And I, I've been saying this every Sunday, and I'm going to keep saying it until uh, we all until I feel like we really get it. And that is, we have a propensity to focus on what's missing and not celebrating what we have. I keep reminding us the average church size is 65 people. We blow that out most Sundays. And that's why I keep telling us to stand and to look at, because what you appreciate, appreciates. Yeah. What do we give? Einstein, e, e equals MC squared, says that we attract what we give our attention to. Yes. So we will grow when we focus on our growth, yes. Yes. not our lack. Yes. When we keep having conversations about what's missing, we keep getting what's missing. <laughs> and so let's talk about what we have so that that will increase. Amen? Amen. So that's why I'm excited today. I'm so excited. We have our official DUT Ambassador Awards. Woo! So I'm going to do this backwards. I'm going to do the month of August, then I'm going to do um, July. Um, for You'll see why in a minute. We had a three-way tie for the month of August. And so because of that, um, I wanted to let they, you know, it's like the lottery. If y'all, if multiple people win the tickets, you got to split the prize. <laughs> so I want to recognize that if you are here, please come forward. Our August DUT ambassador and you um, Fisher Award is based on the scripture, Matthew 4 and 19, where God calls us to be fishers of men. So our August DUT Fisher Ambassador Award goes to three people. And our first person, I'm not sure if they are here, is Barbara Ellison Austin. And Barbara's not here. We have her gift certificate for her. And one of the things you get is you take your certificate downstairs uh, for fellowship, and you get a complimentary meal. And you get a gift certificate to the bookstore. Isn't that awesome? And John Cromer. So John, here is your DUT ambassador certificate and your gift certificate to the bookstore. So stay up here. Now, we did not exclude the leaders of the church, which means Reverend Artel is also a DUT Fisher ambassador. Thank you so much. So you two come up here, come up in there, come on and back and celebrate. So please give them a hand. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good job, good job. All right, you have a seat. Now, have a seat. 
the moment I've been waiting for. I'm so excited. Our first official DUT ambassador, and we didn't do her justice last month. We had to get some things in order, but they're in order now. Thank God for divine order. Carol Weaver. Carol, so she invited the most number of people, not just for the month of July, but for August too. <laughs> and so she gets a special certificate and as the official inaugural DUT Fisher Ambassador, Amen. we're going to adorn her with this stole that she can wear every Sunday. <laughs> now, if you would leave like to say a couple words. I just want to say thank you. Um, this is my church home, and I love it. And many of you were at the birthday party um, on Friday, and I saw many people that had not been here in a while, and I said, you know what? I want you to come back to church. We need to have a come home Sunday and invite all of those who are no longer here or watching um, by YouTube to come back home because we need you. Yeah. And today I brought Miss Carden here who hasn't been here in a while. But I said, Miss Carden, you gotta come on home. I'll be there at 930 to pick you up. So let's encourage those that um, knew to come but who have, who have been here in the past and haven't been here recently. Tell them come on home. So I wanna uh, have a come home Sunday. So I don't know when we can uh, do that, but I'd like to uh, put that. You're going to be on the committee? OK, John Crow, we're going to be on the committee? We, OK, we got a committee. And anybody else that wants to uh, be a part of the Come Home Committee, see one of us. Thank you. That is awesome. And so if all of the winners later see me afterwards so I can get a photograph of you um, for our records for our church. So uh, isn't that wonderful? Isn't this awesome? And. Um, She's not in here. She's going to strangle me for doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, the last thing I want to do is, is, like Carol said, we had a make magnificent time selling. First of all, I just want y'all to know, if you want to look good as you age, come to Detroit Unity Temple. I want to tell y'all, this is the fountain of youth, because I'm going to tell you, when I got the invitation for Pam's birthday party, yes. and it said 80, I fell out. I said 80, what? She, she listen. If you want to look good and feel good and move well and live wealthy and be prosperous, this is a place for you. This is the place. And I want the, the excitement that we have for the Lions, I want us to have for Detroit Unity Temple. That's the kind of, that will fill up this place because our goal is not to fill up the church, it's to grow the kingdom of God. Praise God. So the last thing I'm going to say is, is Pam was born to remind us of this. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because I look, every time somebody's birthday, I look in the Bible for a scripture that matches the day they were born. So 830 says, and those who he predestined, he called. And those whom he called, he justified. And those whom he justified, he glorified. Praise God, we glorified. This is the day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Now this is the time that we celebrate. This is the actual birthday time, folks. So anybody that has a birthday in the month of September, please come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. We're not going to ask you to sing a song or anything like that. Just come on down. That's Miss Carmen. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Ah, all right. Look at these, these September babies, these Virgo babies. While they're all coming up, I have to add some names up there. Everybody in my family was born in September. <laughs> Brother, September 7th. New son-in-law, September 6th. Brother, September 19th. Wow. Brother, September 13th. 
mother, September 26th. Sister-in-law, September 29th. Wow. Twins, September 20th. So oh, I say happy birthday to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have, and Marilyn's not here, I don't see her, but I want to get awesome. your names. So come on over, tell us who you are. My name is Shelby Cox. And the 16th, I will be 83 years Get old. Get out of here. Wait a minute. Would you look at this? Look at this beautiful woman. She just, she just did. All right. Good morning. I'm Carmen Collier, and September 8th is my birthday. And Pam is one year older than I am. So Get out of here. <laughs> Boy, I, took, I agree. Unity does make it happen, don't it? Yeah. Chana Johnson, my birthday is Tuesday, September the 3rd, and I'll be a year older. <laughs> Good morning, my name is Mary Davis, my birthday is September 10th, and I'll be 72. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you, you, you guys are reinventing the, the, the wheel here. All right, so let's sing happy birthday to you. Ready? Stand up. I'd like to say a special happy birthday to my Anybody son. Anybody celebrating uh, what? No. What's next? Just want to say a special happy birthday to my son, John, who's not with us anymore, but his birthday is September 8th. All right. All right. Anniversaries. 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 Anybody celebrating? Hello. Ah. Here goes the chess line. Chess line. Ah, okay. Wait, 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 we got another question. All right. Where's John at? Where's John at? We got, we got, that's right, right. We got two uh, family anniversaries here, the Vickers and the right, Andridges. Right. Oh, there we go. A oh, public Vickers. service announcement. Oh, Connie wants to make a public service announcement. Okay, I'd like to invite everyone to come into the bookstore today. We have uh, Monica Redmond. She does the Monred Tea. She has samples in there for everyone, samples for free. Oh, very good. And also, she has brought in a licensed herbal pharmacist. And if you have health conditions and all, uh, she will, uh, he will help you with uh, different herbs and things like that. And you can also set up an appointment with him, or consultation, I should say. Excuse me, because I didn't have this prepared. <laughs> we got it. Go into the bookstore. Yeah. All right, so this couple have been married, let me guess. They met in nursery school. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Well, let's see. We, my name is Cheslon Vickers. Constance Vickers. And we have been, oh, I have been married to this beautiful lady. She's beautiful too, eh? Yes, she is. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. For 51 years. Get out of here. Thank you. That is good. Pray for All me. the time. <laughs> All the time. She's teaching them young ladies. I saw young ladies over there smiling like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, guys. All right. Good morning. Um, Linda Dandridge and my husband, John Dandridge, he left. He's not with me right now. He's upstairs counting money. Yes. That. Um, John and I will be married 45 years on September 8th. Here, 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 here. See? Look, and we've got this wonderful looking couple here. Here we go. Um, Toby Brown and Barbara Brown, 24 years. Here, here. Hey. 24. And how many seconds? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I used to have hair. He <laughs> came in with an afro. He <laughs> came in with an afro. <laughs> you guys. All right, so let's do a happy, happy anniversary. You ready? Yeah. I like this one. Happy anniversary, happy 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Birthday. Birthday. Thank you for the birthday people and the anniversary people, and that completes my announcement for the day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, gentlemen from Unity, there's a group of young people behind you. Would you please have them stand and introduce who they are? Can I leave out this wonderful group? So, someone please come up and share what these young ladies are about and what they do. You know, I couldn't leave these young ladies out. We've introduced the Lodge, but these young ladies came here to Detroit Unity Temple. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> greetings, greetings, greetings. It's a great day. It's a great day. To my young people, we are Prince Hall Grand Youth Fraternity, Order of the Eastern Star jurisdiction of Michigan, serving young people between the ages of 33 to 15, but we'll keep them until they turn 18. So thank you for coming out, and thank you for having us. Hey, I have to tell you, though, the Lodge is also on the 28th of this month. We'll be having a comedy show right here at Detroit Unity Temple, and Elite the Daughter Moody daughter is a part of that. So that's going to take place the last Saturday in September. Isn't that great? You know, we have talent. I'd like to share with you for the, our anniversary, our gala, if you would like to have a patron size ad or, or one eight page for $15, a cover page is $150. You can also have your name listed in the booklet as a patron for only $10, so we all can contribute from one way or the other, and I just wanted to make sure I add that in there as we go forward. So just give yourself a hand as we get ready to close. I must tell you this before I forget, they have prepared fellowship downstairs. So all of you who like to go downstairs, you eat free today because you're our guest. Are there any other guests who's here for the first time? Can you please stand? Let's bless our guests, everybody. Let's stand, put our hands together, and let's bless them together. We love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in you. Amen. We are a very loving church, but we're also a very humble church. So let us take this time, as it says, Unity everywhere, we say this prayer. We know that God is a love that has no end and a power that knows no bounds. God's healing power of divine life is restoring, healing, and revitalizing our world in this very moment. We let go of any fears of anxiety, and we affirm that all are safe, healthy, and protected. We bless all those who support us in maintaining vibrant, radiant health, we express divine life in all we think, say, and do. We bless our global family with radiant health, peace of mind, and abundant love. And as we bring our service to a close, I would like to take a moment to give a heartfelt thank you to everyone that has continued to support us with your tithes and offerings. We truly cannot do what we do here without you. Our goal is to go forth and spread the love, light, and teachings of Jesus the Christ. So please remember to invite your friends and family to join our 10 a.m. Sunday service in person or to watch us on a playback at 12 noon. You simply go to www.detroitunity.com and then click on the Red Star broadcast button. Now let us all stand as we get ready to say our, sing our prayer protection and our peace song. Please don't forget about the meal downstairs. We thank you over and over for being here, and we'd just like to say thank you, God.
I would like all the live members and join take a collective picture right here right after service. 